What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the best corpse explosion build for the Necromancer. Now this is going to be centered around the Black River itself so you will need this unique for this build but the rest of the gear isn't going to be too hard to find. The other unique that could make this even more beneficial is going to be how from below but it's definitely not necessary to have this. That's just going to further increase our damage by quite a bit but at the same point, we're getting all the damage we really need from the Black River on top of some of the other legendary aspects that we'll be combining with this to overall give us the capability of possibly one of the strongest builds for Necromancer right now. As the big thing with this build is not only does it have massive damage output, but it has really strong survivability. With Decrepify and the fact that Blood Mist can actually explode a bunch of different corpses and spawn in corpses for us, Essentially, we'll be able to constantly be utilizing this in tandem with Corpse Tendrils, further increasing our damage when it comes to stunning and giving vulnerability and slowing in our enemies. On top of that, throwing in the Golem to really give us even more of those corpses, it ends up being something that we can fortify ourselves conti continuously up to 100%. And trust me, the Fortify is going to be extremely strong with this build. But at the same time, we're going to be able to constantly be going into Blood Mist, constantly dropping bombs everywhere, constantly creating massive areas of effect damage with this Corpse Explosion. And the Corpse Explosion damage is going to ramp up unbelievably. I, I couldn't believe how far I was able to actually push when it came to tiers with just this build compared to my other builds. I was actually able to go 25 levels higher than myself. I was going up into tier 55 and 56, and you'll notice I'm at 85 right now. And that'd be like level 110 and I'm able to still kill inside of that. The problem just becomes that really a one shot machine in that moment. So as soon as you mess up, it, it's just all over. You know, it could be one of those moments where you're walking into a room over and over, just getting hit by one of those giant crossbows. It's a skeleton and uh, trust me, the frustration's real with that one. But that being said, we need to get into this build and we've also, this is one that can just take on the Butcher anytime you see him. Trust me, it'll be really easy. I have some of that gameplay footage, you probably already saw it right now, or I'll have it popped up right now as we're going into the uh, skill tree and then going into the gear, describing that and the Book of the Dead along with the Paragon and then moving on to the gameplay, showcase how to utilize this build and get the most out of it. That being said, let's jump straight into that skill tree. All right, when it comes to the skill tree, sadly enough, we do have to put two points into reap. We'll put those there. You could put one more point into it, but uh, you're always going to have to put four points into the core slot. We're not going to use any cores or core skills with this build. We're only going to go for hewed flesh and the unliving en energy. This is definitely not a build I would say go for leveling. Obviously, this is one that you need to... Uh, you know, basically level yourself and then respec into because you're not going to make it without the full tree. But going into the next area, we're going to get full into Blood Mist, five points into that. And we we'll want to make sure that we get the Ghastly Blood Mist. That way we're creating a corpse every second that we're uh, inside of Blood Mist. On top of that, we want to max out Corpse Explosion as much as possible and go into Blighted Corpse Explosion. Along with that, we want Grim Harvest. Well, actually, we'll take two points out of Grim Harvest. And we'll put that over here in Death's Embrace. I'm an idiot. I should have changed this earlier. That is actually going to give us a bit more survivability, but that should showcase to you when we get to the gameplay footage that I didn't even need that to survive most of that, but that could have been even better for me and just further increasing our damage output. But one point into Grim Harvest and then three points into Fueled by Death. If you have a necklace that's further increasing that, you're just going to have even more damage output. Going down to the curses, though, we are going to want Iron Maiden as this is going to be something that we'll cast for free. But in tandem, we'll have a legendary aspect where both with the Crepify and Iron Maiden will be able to increase our overall damage output with shadow damage based on this legendary aspect. But we'll get to that once we get to the gear. But the big thing is abhorrent Iron Maiden. So each time that we kill one of these uh, enemies that we've cursed with Iron Maiden, we're getting 5% health back, giving us a bit more survivability. On top of that, Amplify Damage, just to give us even more damage output from the curses. But Decrepify is going to be a necessi necessity, as we want Abhorrent Decrepify. With Lucky Hit, enemy hits while afflicted with Decrepify have up to a 15% chance to reduce your active cooldowns by one second. This is going to give us the capability of constantly being in Blood Mist, constantly capable of utilizing Corpse Tendrils, and just giving us everything that we need in order to get the maximum damage output and maximum survive, ugh, survivability. But moving on to the next list, we've got Corpse Tendrils over here. Now, 
sadly enough, we'll only put one point into corpse tendrils as the big thing that we're going for here is just a vulnerability. We want to make sure that we get the played corpse tendrils. That way we're just further amplifying the damage output of each one of our corpse explosions by a much larger amount. This is always going to be a flat 20% increase until or before we even add any more vulnerable damage into it. If you've got vulnerable damage on some of your gear, that's just going to further increase that damage output. But it's just one of those multipliers that gives us even more. And on top of that, slowing and stunning, which stunning will give us even more damage output. Going past that, we need Necrotic Carapace. We are actually going to be generating a lot of Fortify with this build since we are utilizing the Golem with this. That Golem is constantly going to be dropping its own corpses, generating more corpses for us to not only explode, but at the same time, each time he's dropping those corpses, we're gaining more Fortify. And with some of our uh, aspects on our gear, we'll actually be getting even more Fortify than what we get from the base value right here. Moving on from that, Reaper's Pursuit, we need three into that. Gloom and Terror, we want to maximize our damage when we want to maximize our movement speed as we're going to be needing to kind of circle around in certain moments. As Since we're only utilizing Corpse Explosion as our main attack and we don't have anything else to attack, there may be some moments where we'll need to kind of move for a moment, but generally we're going to be kiting them into our Corpse Explosion and our cooldowns are going to be pretty much refreshed instantly the only time that this really becomes an issue is that there's like one or two enemies they get melted really quickly and then you immediately just run into one more it's just one of those irritating moments but one into crippling darkness so we can have a little bit of stun power but we don't need to maximize that one going down to the bottom we're going to need standalone just for damage reduction and i put three points into golem mastery just to give him a little bit more life so he can survive a bit longer you don't necessarily need to do this one. You could actually throw this into Mento Mori so you can get the Skeletal Warrior and Skeletal uh, Mages benefits by 60% increase. But I believe the longer the Golem is capable of living, the more corpses he can produce. And it does really benefit us when it comes to fortifying us. Every time he's taking damage, he's going to be dropping another corpse. And this does benefit us quite a bit. So it's kind of a toss up. It's one. You can make the choice on that one, whether you just want more damage output or more critical strike chance. I can't remember what I put into. No, more shadow damage and more vulnerable damage is what we're going to get from the Book of the Dead. But it's up to you on that one. And the last point is going to be Shadow Blight, as this is just going to give us the full encompassing 180% increase to our overall damage from a legendary aspect and give us more of that static damage later on as we keep damaging these enemies. But this is going to be something that really ramps up the damage of Corpse Explosion as well. But that's going to be the skill tree. Now let's move on to the gear. And when it comes to our helmet, we're going to want to have the Blood Mist Triggers Corpse Explosion on surrounding corpses. This is going to give us not only a little bit for reducing the cooldown with uh, Blood Mist, but at the same time it's going to give us massive capability of spawning in those corpses and immediately being able to dish out that damage on certain groups so that way even if the uh, golem's not around us or if we can't produce one of those corpses we can immediately just push in throw those down on the ground and it's always going to leave one corpse behind that we can hit with corpse tendrils to pull everything in and then start capitalizing on it again and really get those curses on and reduce the cooldown to where we're able to get blood mist again now with your helmet obviously cooldown reduction is actually big for this build we do want that maximum life is going to help you but cooldown reduction and intelligence and possibly points to the crepify are going to be really beneficial for you on the helmet and when it comes to the chest piece now arguably you do want the uh, disobedience you want the 0.40 percent increase to armor now you don't want it on the chest piece you actually want it on the pants as for the chest piece i've chosen that i would rather have a 20 percent or is, which one's the uh exploiters you have a 20 percent increased crowd control duration while enemies are unstoppable but you deal 47 percent increased damage to them now this this one is pretty much just amplifying our damage in moments when we're utilizing corpse tendril against some of those elites that and some of those moments in nightmare dungeons when below 30 percent life these enemies become unstoppable if we don't have the capability of really stunning them or slowing them with corpse tendrils it can be a bit problematic especially if they're capable of running outside of our corpse explosion so this gives us a little bit more of that damage to really get that melting power in anytime that we're kind of kiting them through that or if they have unstoppable and trying to move through it 
but on top of that also increasing our overall crowd control duration. But with the chest piece, you want shadow damage, intelligence, and anything that's just damage resistance after that. Shadow damage is going to benefit us, but intelligence is the main one you want for the chest piece along with those damage resistances. And the exploiters one. Now when it comes to the gloves, how from below is a great choice. It is going to further increase our damage output with corpse explosion and give us a little bit more mobility. So if there's some of those enemies that kind of move away from the corpses, we'll still be able to hit them as this one's going to send them charging at them and then exploding. And on top of that, it gives us more lucky hit chance, which is going to be big for this build. We do want to stack up quite a bit of that lucky hit chance. But we can do that with some gloves, and if you don't have Hal from below, if you have some legendary gloves, one aspect that would be really great for this build would be the uh, offensive act ugh, aspect of retribution. Now, distant enemies have an 8% chance to be stunned for 2 seconds. This is something that would give us possibly a little bit more survivability, but the big thing is just really increasing the stunned enemy damage. Because no matter what, that's just a flat damage to any enemy that stunned will be getting. 36% increase that could be up to 40. Every time that we're hitting with corpse tendrils, we are stunning those enemies and we can be stunning with any one of our darkness skills. So this is just something that not only is going to give us a little bit of possible survivability increase from just stunning distant enemies, but at the same time, overall just giving us that additional DPS that we've been looking for if we don't have the uh, how from below. Now going on to the pants. You don't want the bone storm with the pants you would rather have the disobedience you want that gaining a 0.35 sadly enough in the gameplay footage i was using these two but bone storm's not working at all for us that this should showcase how well this build can perform and how it can perform even better than what i've showcased within the gameplay footage we have at the end of this as i just couldn't get enough time in to fully upgrade this or find a better or a better ad ugh, aspect attribute when it came to disobedience where I had something that was 40% or higher and I just didn't have the crafting material to just upgrade those efficiently but even without them worked perfectly fine but with your pants you want four ranks to corpse explosion now there is one unique that could benefit you even more when it comes to survivability, but you'd be missing out on those plus four ranks to corpse explosion. And that unique is going to be temerity. Now temerity is something that could benefit us with this build, considering we're using Iron Maiden to constantly get 5% health every time that we kill something. So we would be overhealing and you can overheal with your health potions, but you would be missing out on four points into that corpse explosion. That would, that's, that's quite a bit of damage getting cut away there. But if you wanted more survivability, temerity would be a great option to throw into this build, add a little bit of a cut to that damage, even though we're still getting that 130 percent increase from black river and then another possible 40 percent from the uh, how from below it could be enough to make up for the fact that we're just gaining more survivability with these pants so this one's one of your you know up to you if you want anything higher to just maximum health since we're going to have maximum fortify with this build having something like this where you just got an additional almost third health bar on top that's just giving you more damage resistance it could be uh something just to massively increase that survivability. But when it comes to boots, we want damage reduction on that. We want corpse explosion. Ideally, if we could get plus four ranks to corpse explosion and blood mist, that would be nice, but flat out damage reduction, damage reduction from distant enemies, all these things would be beneficial for us or even just intelligence, just for more DPS output. Now, when it comes to our boots, we're looking for the Sabatins eluding, primal Sabatins, I believe eluding is the name of the aspect. Becoming injured while crowd control grants us unstoppable for four seconds. This effect has a 32 second cooldown. Ideally, you'd want the 20 second cooldown, but this is just going to help us out in those moments when we possibly get stunned, froze, or uh, slowed while we're being injured in any of those moments to just kind of get out of dodge as quickly as we possibly can. The big thing about the boots is we want corpse tendrils increased by this. Sadly enough, I couldn't find some boots to increase it by four, but plus three is going to be fine enough. We'll have enough cooldown reduction with this to basically get them. I mean, my corpse tendrils is all the way down at 6.7 seconds. Don't worry, you know, it with one more point, probably be at six seconds, maybe. But it's it's going to be up so quick, even if you didn't have 
more than plus three, you're going to be fine. But one big thing, Fortify Generation is actually huge for this build. If you can at least get 50% Fortify Generation, just the boots and possibly one, one other item, just further increasing that Fortify Generation would be a huge help for this build. But movement speed, always, always want movement speed on those boots and anything with damage reduction or possibly intellect. But obviously... We've got the Black River going to be our main handed. We're going to be dropping the Amethyst into that for damage over time. You know, a good roll on this one is always just going to be one that just has high intelligence or high damage to healthy enemies, which that damage to healthy enemies, I think, is the only I think this might be the only item we get for Necromancer that actually increases our overall damage to healthy enemies. And it's it's noticeable in certain moments. But moving on to our focus now. With our focus, the legendary aspect I have on this is going to be the Edge Masters. This one's going to give us 20% increased damage since we're not utilizing our resource with this. It's always going to be maxed out. Anytime that we use one of our skills while we have that maxed out uh, resource, we're going to gain 20% increased damage to it. Now, Decrepify is going to cost us 10 Essence, but... Iron Maiden's free, and any time that it curses an enemy, we're getting 5 Essence back each time. So essentially, when we're spamming both of these on those enemies, we're getting that resource back every single time. We're only going to need to do it a few times. So we're always going to have that maximum resource. So this just further increases us by another 20%. Now, when it comes to the focus, I mean, this is this is probably the closest thing to a perfect roll. You want the one that's going to give us cooldown reduction as a base stat. You want that. I wish I could highlight it right there but you also want additional cooldown reduction as high as you can possibly get it i've gotten 30 percent cooldown reduction with my helmet as well but it's still it is soft cap it does say that i only have 28 percent, but it is extremely noticeable at 28 percent. on top of that lucky hit chance would be great and intelligence those two stats but the big thing for the focus is you really do want that maximum cooldown reduction. Lucky hit chance on top of that is just a real sweet bonus with that. And so is intelligence. The biggest thing you really want out of this is that cooldown reduction for the focus. Moving on to the ring of the damned with this one, we are going to further increase our DPS output when it comes to shadow damage overall. So each one of our corpse explosions is going to be increased by a possibility of 40% by afflicting by both Decrepify and Iron Maiden. So each time that we hit those curses, both of them on any enemy, we're gaining a further increase of 40% increased damage. Now with this ring, this is not the best ring, trust me. You don't need critical strike chance with this build. We're dealing enough damage over time with this one. You really want maximum life isn't bad, but fortified generation, lucky hit chance, and shadow damage. Shadow damage over time. Um, any type of damage to stunned, slowed, or vulnerable, those would be beneficial. You do kind of want that. I'm missing out on a good bit of damage out of this one, considering I'm basically only getting a two survivability aspects here, whereas the critical strike chance just is barely hitting if it ever is with the Shadow Blight key passive. So that's the only way that we could get crit in any way with this build. But we, we don't want anything to do with critical strike chance on this one. We want lucky hit, and we want flat out shadow damage. Damage to stun, damage to crowd control. And moving on to the next ring, we've got the loop of decay. Decay, each time the shadow blight key passive deals damage to enemies, it increases our shadow blight's damage within 10 seconds by 24%, up to 40% stacking up to 5 times. This is just further giving us even more of that DPS output when it comes to the Shadow Blight's key passive. But you'll notice with this ring, we don't need the critical strike chance, but damage to slowed, shadow damage, damage to stunned enemy, shadow damage over time. These would be great things to be jumping on for that. Now, when it comes to our amulet, we're going to want the blighted aspect as this is going to give us 180% increased damage for six seconds after the Shadow Blight's key passive damages enemies 10 times, which we're going to be able to rack up really quickly with Corpse Explosion, especially in massive or large packs. But this is going to be the biggest way or the most amount that we can get out of this aspect without going to a two-handed sword now or two-handed weapon. But this is actually going to really amplify our damage with corpse explosion because of that 130 percent increase on top of the 37 now before i've utilized this by itself 
with my other build, I was utilizing crit to kind of give me that advantage of pushing into harder content. But with this on top of the 130% with corpse explosion, that damage over time gets absolutely ridiculous. It was never at this melting power. Now it does have a stalemate moment. It doesn't always get to this like crazy amount every single time but when we can get it at that maximum 180 when we can get maximum from the 130 percent increase from all four corpses and we can get the uh below or how from below on top of that with every other stacked damage without just adding critical strike to that it gets to about 200,000 per tick when it comes to the damage output it gets absolutely insane with how much flat damage that it's dealing in certain moments you'll see in the gameplay footage coming up it does delete some packs but the problem with that at the same time is it does become a slow killer when it comes to one enemy when it comes to boss fights we're still able to get them down fairly quickly but it is going to drag out a little bit but that's the great thing about this build is it also has the survivability so you're really not going to be stressing all that much a lot of times you're just kind of like all right, let me get another corpse. Let me get another corpse waiting for a moment, especially if they're a boss that moves all around like one of those spiders. That can be one of the more frustrating moments to kind of just make sure that they sit in the corpse explosion. But every other moment, especially when you're able to pull them in with the uh, corpse tendrils and even in boss fights, we will be able to stagger the bosses very easily with the Crepify and the constant ability of utilizing corpse tendrils to hit that vulnerable on them. But at the same time, filling out their stagger meter really quickly. And that's the moment we, when we can capitalize with all of our damage on top of them and melt them pretty fast. Now, sadly enough, I got a little bit distracted when I was actually making the video and kept going into uh, 180%. The attributes you want on the necklace are going to be plus three to all curse skills and possibly plus three to fueled by death. Those are actually going to be way better than just having the plus three passive fueled by death. You want more points into the cor or bleh, the corpse skills as that's just going to give us even more damage with corpse explosion by itself. Beyond that, you want something like shadow damage, further increase the damage, damage resistance or damage reduction from distant enemies. And anytime you can get that percentage increase of intelligence, it's always going to be a banger for that DPS. But back into the video. But that being said, oh, we also need to talk about the gems, which obviously when it comes to your resistances, they do cap out at a certain point. Just keep an eye on which your rings are going to be filled up with, and that's going to base around what you're going to socket in for each one of your uh, jewelry when it comes to increasing whichever resistance you're pretty low on. Good rule of thumbs to just have 40 to 45 percent, if not a little above that for each one of the different resistances. But shadow damage is probably the least important one. But fire, probably the more important one. Now, when it comes to the gems inside of our gear, we're going to go with the sapphire as this is going to give us damage reduction while fortified. We're pretty much going to be maximized on fortify all of the time, especially because of the golem and because we're constantly utilizing blood mist to drop corpses. It's going to jump up really quickly. And if you have at least 50% fortify generation, that is going to massively increase the point at which we're going to be able to just hit that maximum fortified as quickly as possible. Almost arguably in war or the first uh, blood mist cast, we'll be able to get that done. But that being said, let's jump straight over into the uh, Book of the Dead and then get into the Paragon board. Now, when it comes to the Book of the Dead, we're going to have the Reapers with the or Reaper Sacrifice, so we can get that 15% increased shadow damage. When it comes to the Skeletal Mages, we'll go with Cold for an increase to vulnerable damage. And with the Golem, we'll actually go with the Bone Golem for the first point where each time your Bone Golem takes up to 20% of its maximum life as damage, it sheds a corpse. This is going to happen pretty much every single hit when we start pushing into much higher tiers. This guy is going to get melted quite often, but it's going to benefit us greatly when it comes to massive amounts of corpses on the ground and masses or massive amounts of fortify increase from each time that he's getting hit. And it's only about 20 seconds before he comes back up. You won't even notice. Trust me, he'll be coming in and occasionally he can be beneficial as we can utilize his cooldown to actually taunt some of those enemies. So in some hairier situations, we might be able to or 
Sometimes we can just utilize that to make him unstoppable, taunt things, take a little bit less damage, create a few more corpses, and just give us a little bit of that breathing room. Now, when I was doing the Thorns build for minions, often the uh, big issue was that enemies wouldn't attack my minions all that often. There's been more than a few times where he's actually just been out there kind of tanking some things, kind of giving me a little bit of breathing room to where I can just bloat around and deal some of that damage and just kind of hold things in place ends up working out quite well with this build and just giving us even more survivability and even more DPS output from just him shedding those corpses. But let's go into the Paragon board. Now when it comes to the first glyph that we want to socket in, we want to go with Control. Now arguably this is the one that I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I want to pop out for the, which one was it, Undaunted. Now this one would just give us further increase to damage from being fortified and give us an additional 10% damage reduction from having fortified. Now that is the big reason I would want this. I don't even want the damage increase from fortified. That's that's beneficial, but I'm really looking for a little bit more damage reduction with fortify, but at the same time it utilizes willpower and there's not a whole lot of willpower in that first section. We're gonna have a lot more of the intelligence. So that's where it's kind of one of those moments where we're possibly gonna be missing out on a massive amount of DPS from that crowd control as not only do we have that crowd control damage increase of 87%, but then we also get another 10% for slowed and then 20% for stun. So that's another 30% right there. That's 110% we're gonna be missing right from that. Whereas with the Fortify, I'm not exactly sure how much we'll actually end up getting as you'll notice with my shadow damages, they're only about 60% and they're about equivalent with the willpower in each one of those sections. But that's one thing to note. But going from there, our first board actually would be better off going with Flesh Eater as that's just going to benefit this build even more. Probably want to go through from this point right here, connect it right there, and then grab up the damage to injured enemies. Critical Strike damage isn't what we're looking for. We do actually want to pull those points off. Now that I think about it, I could probably rework this, uh, this Paragon board a little bit better, but... I'll do that when it comes to the link down in the description below when it comes to the Diablo 4GG build for this. I'll kind of move some nodes around, but the big thing that we're going for is the Flesh Eater Legendary node and being able to socket in the Glyph of Scourge, giving us even more shadow damage over time and further increasing the damage to enemies afflicted by sh shadow damage over time. But on top of that, also giving us a little bit of that poison resistance and armor. But moving on... For, or, yeah, also damage to elites. But moving from that point, we'll head out from this section and move into Wither just to give us a little bit more of that damage over time effects, possibly getting a 5% chance to deal 50% bonus damage. And for every 50 willpower, this is further increased by another 1% chance and 2.5% damage overall. But on top of this, we'll have some damage reduction and giving us even more shadow damage over time, shadow damage. And on top of that, we'll also be putting in the darkness glyph for more shadow damage and giving us a little bit of a damage reduction from those enemies hit by shadow damage. So a little bit more survivability with that, but on top of that, even more damage output from uh, damage over time and everything else. That's going to be the Paragon board right there. Now let's jump straight into that gameplay footage, showcase how to utilize this build. And we're back at it here at the prison of Caldeum, I believe is the name. Tier 50, I've gotten pretty comfortable with tier 50, but you'll notice the first thing that we're going to do is immediately afflict the enemies or the first packs that we meet up with with the curse. That way we can then go into uh, Blood Mist and effectively start dealing some of that damage and getting some of that lucky hit chance to start reducing the cooldown of Blood Mist as we're utilizing it. This can happen fairly quickly and in larger packs you can almost have it immediately available by the time you're done with it. Now when it comes to these larger packs, effectively you're going to have to get some timing with this one. You'll notice every time I kind of go into the middle of the pack and then I exit just as quickly and right at that last moment we got that final corpse from Blood Mist and I hit that with corpse tendrils to pull everything in and then start spamming that corpse explosion. Now, effectively, the golem's just going to, you know, he's going to die, he's going to come back, he's going to die, but you'll notice our fortify is constantly up. We're almost immediately maxed out on that, even without using blood mist in some moments where it's just the corpse is falling off the golem. We're almost at 100% all of the time. It's quite ridiculous, and that damage reduction is massive. 
I'm quite shocked by a fortified generation just at 50% because it feels like it is greatly increased more than 50% in some of these instances, but it makes to be great for that tankiness for this build. But you'll notice that corpse explosion is melting it in certain moments, though, you know, still be wary of those fire torrents like that elite right there. That that stuff always ends up just ripping me. Or even if I just get close, if they've got the shield around them with that one, God, that's that's nightmare level frustration right there. But moving on from that one, that's going to be an easy start to us. And I believe down here, we're effectively going to hit one of those moments where we're, oh yeah, that's right, we'll have a room to just kind of melt things with. A lot of times I just go in and you'll notice again, uh, immediately I've got the timing down with Blood Mist where I know when it's about to run out so we can drop that last corpse down hit them with the uh, corpse tendrils and be able to pull them in. But you'll notice the cooldowns are so quick with this. The rest of the time, we're just kind of... Oh, that's what I forgot to say. Is I'm also cursing right after we get the corpse tendrils and then bombing with the corpse explosion. Goodness. Sometimes I skip some of the steps. But effectively, that's going to be the manner is just curse, blood mist, exit with corpse tendrils, curse again, after everything's combined together with corpse tendrils and then just bomb away with that corpse explosion and it just absolutely melts in those moments when you do have four of those corpses to consume that damage gets absolutely ridiculous again one of those moments where we get the harpies with the uh, damage resistant aura that they're producing but now we're going to be basically going pack after pack i got kind of lucky with this dungeon uh, as soon as I rolled over here, after we moved through, I think, two packs, it was just the elite after elite after elite after elite. And sadly enough, there was only one of them that gave me a bit of an irritation. Since we are only using Corpse Explosion, there can be some enemies, especially elites, the shamans specifically, where they start teleporting, you know, they're moving around. They're basically being able to avoid the Corpse Explosion at all costs. This is not going to be a consistent problem and we will still be able to kill them. We've got very good survivability with this build, but it can be really frustrating and a little bit more time consuming than you'd really like it to be. But luckily enough, it doesn't happen all that often. And we only had one of them in this one and it did not last as long as it did for me with uh, one of them on tier 56, which whew, that was uh, that was an experience right there. Did not enjoy it. But you'll notice we're able to group some of these up and just melt super quickly. As soon as we have that, this one's going to be that, I think that shaman that gave me a little bit of a minute. And I think the big reason is because he's got that shield on the outside of him. If they do have that shield around him, your corpse explosions or your corpses outside of it, if you have how from below, they will not actually run into or inside of the shield. They'll hit the outside of that shield and then explode. Now, if you've got the larger radius, this, they might be able to get touched by the radius of the outside of the circle since it will kind of dive a little bit into the shield itself. But a lot of times you're going to have to get inside of that shield. And you'll notice this is one of those moments where we're only dropping one corpse at a time. We're not really ramping up that 130% increase of damage. It's a bit slower than it, you want it to be, but we're still getting the job done. We're still dealing some massive damage. But now we're able to just move on to that next pack. Got another one of those shamans, and thankfully we've got a massive pack around them, so we're just able to really melt that quickly. But yet again, we've got another one of those damage-resistant auras. Those will always make those elites just as tanky as possible, and it gets quite irritating. But yeah, and sometimes you know, hopefully soon they'll be fixing the blight fog because I, I tell you right now, sometimes you can't see those explosions inside of there. Some of that environmental damage that's coming up with some of these nightmare dungeons that can be one of the bigger problems with this build you probably saw that at the beginning with the butcher it was like that fog completely covered him even i couldn't even barely see where he was but that's crazy to me hopefully within the next patch we'll have this uh, smoothed out as we didn't actually have this in the original beta i looked back at previous footage this only was something that ended up being a problem within the uh, server slam so the latest version of the game, for whatever reason, has had this fog introduced, and I don't know whether or not that ac actually might be affecting frame rate or some some things like that. Maybe there's just too much clutter going on. You know, I'd rather have a smoother, cleaner 
area to actually work around with, but in the beta, it was much better and everything was visible and hopefully soon enough, they'll be bringing that back. But yet again, coming in, laying those curses down, throwing those corpses in, bombing them up. I think we've got everything now, and this is when we'll get to the boss unit. Now, with the boss unit, thankfully, the uh, golem can help quite a bit, as, yet again, every time that he's going to be taking 20% damage, he's going to be dropping corpses, so he's increasing the amount of corpses we're able to get, since we're not going to be hitting or gaining all that many as we'd like, since we're basically only getting it from the blood mist and from huge flesh proccing any time that we're dealing damage to him. But you'll notice it does take a moment to kind of ramp up that damage. But you'll notice, look at that stagger bar. Every time we're hitting him with corpse tendrils, that's going up by a massive chunk. Every time we're hitting him with decrepify, boom, we've got him staggered right here. We're able to really get some massive damage going now. We're really melting him down. As long as we're able to keep him sitting in one spot and we're able to stack up that damage, it has extreme melting power against a boss. But trust me, when it comes to that spider or well, one of the shadow uh, thieve guys with the the bow. God, man, they, some of them can take quite a while when they're just moving all around. It can be really frustrating. But luckily enough, we're still able to get it done quite easily. We've got a lot of survivability with this build, so we're never worrying about dying with it. It's just about how quickly can we actually kill them. Sometimes that gets to be the uh, issue, but sometimes that's the best build for us is the simple one that we can survive with it. We can deal enough damage to kill. May not be the fastest, but it's able to push and it is consistent and it's able to get the job done time and time again. And this one is that. This is by far, arguably, probably one of the best of the uh, Necromancer builds right now. Easiest to use, easiest to have strong survivability with. Not a whole lot when it comes to... Uh, not a whole lot when it comes to how many uniques you need, you know, or how much gear you actually need. You effectively just need a little bit of lucky hit chance, a little bit of shadow damage, and that blood, or that black river. And on top of that, with that shadow blight aspect, that is something you can find from a dungeon. So you can just have 100%. This is something you could utilize to uh, basically kind of push a little bit deeper into some of those tiers and have a good bit of damage to kind of work with if this is something that you have could kind of slap together more than likely it's still going to be dealing enough damage and give you enough survivability to kind of push through until you find something of a better role or better gear for this type of build but hands down probably one of my favorite builds right now and i'm going to be moving on with uh going into some more of the darkness when it comes to the knight's king we still got that one going where we're going to be doing chill damage with everything on darkness going for the minions build going for that those bone builds as well, which I have some gear stashed away. There's going to be plenty more builds coming in the future. So if you enjoy this content, hit that subscription or subscribe button. And if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description below. Follow me over at Twitch. We're streaming daily. We're always pushing with that necromancer. Going to be doing some more tomorrow. And at the same time, hopefully you've enjoyed this content. Hopefully it's helped you out. And on that note, have a good one.